Welcome back to Euro Football Daily and the Champions League knockout stages are just around the corner and we think it's time to look into five players who may just win their team the trophy. 5. Alexis Sanchez After spending six months out of Europe's top competition, Alexis Sanchez moved to Manchester United in a swap deal involving Henrik Mkhitaryan. The Chilean only played one game in the Europa League for the Gunners and has been included in the Red Devil squad for when they play Sevilla later this month. The 29-year-old played 17 times for Arsenal this season in the league, scoring eight goals and assisting another three, the highest goal contribution at the club before his departure. And since his move to Manchester, things have only gotten better. Whilst in London, Alexis was averaging a respectable 2.1 dribbles per 90. However, now he's dribbling past someone at a whopping rate of 5.5 times a game, at a success rate of 77%. This is obviously unsustainable, and we expect it will lower the more games he plays for United. However, it does show the impact he's already having. The number 7 gives Mourinho a different attacking option. Whilst Romelu Lukaku is a more direct forward, Sanchez brings more creative assets to the field. The Belgian is averaging 1.2 passes per game, whilst his Chilean counterpart is producing 2.6 and he's even beating him on shots per 92, with 3.5 to the number 9's 2.8. Due to Sanchez's creative versatility, he's also able to play on the left, right or just behind the striker. United's current left winger is Anthony Martial, who's averaging 0.1 accurate through balls per 90, but Alexis smashes that with 0.4. Sanchez isn't really known for his defensive output, and at Arsenal he was making 1.4 tackles and interceptions per game. However, in his new shade of red, he has more than doubled that at 3.5. 4. Miralan Pjanic With such a star-studded squad, including the likes of Gonzalo Higuain, Giorgio Cellini and Paolo Dybala, who hasn't actually contributed to a goal in the CL this season, you may be surprised over our inclusion of Miralan Pjanic. However, without this man, Juventus may have not made it through to the knockout stages at all. Miralan Pjanic usually plays just in between Kadira and Matuidi, two defensively minded players. However, Pjanic does the hard graft too, making 2.8 tackles and interceptions per 90. Kadira is making just over half that with 1.5. The Bosnian is known more though for his attacking output. He makes on average 2.3 key passes a game, the highest at the old lady, and currently has 7 assists, the fourth highest in the league. He's also scored five goals this season too, meaning he's involved in a goal every 153 minutes. Pjanic also looks great compared to other central midfielders in Serie A, as he has a 90% pass completion rate. Marek Hamsic of Napoli fame has 89%, while Lazio Sergi Milenkovic Savic is sitting on 81. And he's creating chances at a much higher rate too. Whilst Hamsic and Milinkovic Savic create 1.7 and 1.6 chances per 90 respectively, Pjanic is creating a chance 2.8 times a match. Pjanic likes to push play up the pitch, and this is reflected in his passing stats. The midfielder is currently making 44 forward passes a game in Europe's top competition, which is lower than what he's producing in the league. However, compared to Spurs' creative hub Christian Eriksen, it's over double, as the Dane has only been making 21 forward passes per 90 in the CL. Pjanic joined the Bianconeri back in 2016 for 32 million euros, and he's become a vital part of the Aventus machine, linking the defence to the attack. With him in their squad, Spurs' defence will have to be on top form. 3. Raheem Sterling The 2017-18 season has been a campaign Manchester City fans will never forget, and with such a depth of quality players, Raheem Sterling has been a standout performer. Still just 23 years old, the forward began this season in stellar form, contributing to 9 goals in just 8 games, and has only gotten better since. At the time of writing, the Englishman has hit the back of the net 19 times in all competitions, and assisted 10 goals in just 34 games. And Sterling hasn't just become a goalscorer overnight, it's clear he's improved in his second season under Pep Guardiola's tutelage. In 2016-17, he was taking 2.3 shots per 90, with 1.5 of them coming from inside the area. However, this season Sterling has increased this to 3 shots a match and is now taking 2.3 shots from inside the box, the same as teammate Sergio Aguero. The winger has also improved creatively as well. Last season Sterling managed 1.4 key passes per 90 along with a total of 1.6 chances created, but this season he's making 1.6 key passes and increasing the amount of chances created to 1.9, roughly the same output as Mohamed Salah is having in his record-breaking season at Anfield. The Sky Blues player has also shone in the Champions League this season. Along with his four UCL goals in just five games, he's beating his man 4.2 times per 90 at a success rate of 83%. This isn't too far off Lionel Messi's five per game. 
Raheem Sterling has truly come into his own this season. Currently involved in a goal every 90 minutes, the best rate in City's starting 11. It's no surprise his market value has skyrocketed from 50 million euros last campaign to 84 million euros according to Transomar. This season is the Sky Blue's best chance yet at winning the Champions League and Raheem Sterling is the best man to lead them there. 2. Kylian Mbappe Obviously world record breaking Neymar is the main man in Paris but it would be too easy to name him as the reason PSG could finally win the Champions League. Here at EFD we like a challenge and the fact Kylian Mbappe is a decent player kind of helps. Still not even 20 years old, the teenager has destroyed record after record, having become the youngest player to reach 10 goals in the UCL in just 15 games. However, that's not all he's done in the competition. So far this season, he's averaging a goal contribution every 69 minutes, better than Chelsea's Eden Hazard, who's averaging one every 73. But it's not just the Champions League he's destroying. In League 1 this season, he's featured in 17 of PSG's 24 matches. And in that time, he scored nine and assisted a further eight. This may be due to the fact the team is taking 3.4 shots per 90, with three of them coming from inside the box. To put that into context, Neymar, who plays on the opposite wing and has scored 18 times this season, is only taking 2.5 from inside the area. What can this guy not do? Because he's super creative as well. Before his injury, Leroy Sane for Manchester City on average created two chances and made 1.5 key passes per 90. Kylian Mbappe though is creating 2.3 chances and 1.8 key passes. Sane is three years his senior. Now a massive part of his game is his pace. During a match against Lille, Mbappe ran at a peak speed of 44.7 kilometers per hour. And during that game, his average was 36 kmph. Keep that in mind, as Usain Bolt ran at 37.5 when setting the 100 meter record. Woo. Being lightning quick also helps when you're dribbling, as shown by the fact that PSG's number 29 is beating his man 3.6 times a match. The only issue Unai Emre may have is that he's also being dispossessed 2.5 times per 90. At such a young age, it's frightening how good Kylian Mbappe already is, especially given the fact he's already made 88 club appearances. I know if I was a defender playing for Real Madrid, I'd be worried about Mbappe just as much as I am about Neymar. 1. Mark andre to Stegen Barcelona have been excellent this season, having not lost a single game in La Liga so far. This is partly due to their incredible attack with Lionel Messi having already scored 20 league goals. But someone who has slightly gone under the radar is Mark andre ter Stegen. This year, the goalkeeper has been immense, having kept 13 clean sheets in 22 La Liga games. And during that time, he's only conceded 11 goals. Many people may credit the clean sheets to Barca's defence, meaning Ter Stegen doesn't have to make a lot of saves. But this isn't true. The shot stopper is making 2.5 saves per 90. Manuel Neuer, before his injury, was averaging 1.7. Barca's number one is also there for when it matters, as he's currently making five saves per goal. Edison, who we all agree is enjoying a great season at Manchester City, is only making 2.2 saves per goal. Now, being the keeper of Barcelona means you have to be good with your feet, and Ter Stegen has a distribution accuracy of 83%, whilst his German counterpart Neuer only slightly betters him with 84. But Ter Stegen thumps him in terms of distribution length, playing the ball on average at a length of 37 metres compared to Neuer's average of 22. In both La Liga and the Champions League, he has yet to make a single mistake when playing out of defence, attempting 30 passes a game and completing over 80% of them. The goalie is also very safe with his hands, choosing to claim the ball rather than punch it 92% of the time. And in the Champions League, it only gets better, as the keeper has kept four clean sheets in five games, only conceding once to Olympiacos. If Barcelona go on to win the Champions League, a lot of credit will be given to their Argentinian maestro, but their German stopper at the back probably deserves just as much. So that's it. Those were our five players we think could win their team the Champions League. What do you think and have we missed out on any? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, why not check out James and Michael's non-league vlog on FDFC. They even speak to the manager as well. And as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.